Hey, in this video I'm going to cover everything you need to know about painting your new shed. And this process actually starts with the windows. I don't want to put any paint on the windows at all, so I'm going to start by masking them off using this blue painter's tape that's exterior rated, and also some of this kind of paper, I guess it's masking paper. You can pick this up at a painting supply store or at your local big box store. And uh, just carefully put up some tape so that I could hang some paper just to block off any paint from getting in on the glass. Now I am going to be spraying this and so I want to avoid any kind of overspray getting in anywhere. So I was very careful when I did all of this taping and all of this masking to completely cover all of the parts of the window and the glass to make sure there was no possibility of paint getting in. Now before I could start painting, I did need to clean off these vents. These are what I'm going to be painting first, they're the darkest color. And I didn't need to mask off anything because I'm going to be painting the rest of the shed a different color. So I started by cleaning these off first with compressed air and then wiping them all down as well as I could. And then I was ready to start uh, throwing paint on. Then it was just a matter of, uh, you know, getting my paint open and stirred up, loaded up into the gun, and then off I could go and start painting. Now this paint is pretty thin and as a result it flowed out of my gun really easily. I didn't have to do anything to the consistency of the paint to get it to flow properly and to work really well with my paint gun. That was not the case with most of the rest of the paints and you'll see uh, some of the difficulties I faced and how I solved some of those problems uh, with the other colors. So I put two coats of paints on the vents and I let them dry overnight and then it was time to mask them off to get ready for the other colors. I used the same technique here of very carefully covering up anything I did not want to get paint on and being particularly careful about the corners and the edges to make sure I got nice clean lines when I was done. Now the body color of the paint is a little thicker and I had a hard time getting my gun dialed in just right. Eventually I got it to uh, a consistency I thought I was going to like and I started spraying the shed. Now the only real important thing to pay attention to here is to make sure you overlap everything pretty well. Otherwise you'll wind up with uh, uneven coverage and stripes in your paint that, uh, that don't work very well. In fact, I probably could have done a better job overlapping. And you can kind of see I had to go back over some areas there that I hadn't overlapped enough the first time through. All right, so let's talk for just a minute about paint. My builder used a particular brand of paint called Sherwin-Williams. And it's kind of expensive paint, but it's quite good quality. And they require, uh, when I'm building a shed or an outbuilding, that I paint it exactly the same colors using exactly the same paint. So I went to the Sherwin-Williams store to try and get the paint in the specific colors that I needed, and they didn't have it. And rather than wait for them to order it and get it in seven to 10 days, I went ahead and just color matched at Home Depot. Now I want to be clear, I'm not sponsored by anybody, this is just my own experience. Uh, I'm going to tell you exactly what I did to get the results that I'm getting, so that if that's what you're looking for, you can do it too. But do not take this as a promotion of any particular product or manufacturer or place to shop. Now, having said all that, uh, what I did to get the colors to match exactly is I got a couple of 3x5 note cards like this, and the builder gave me a little bit of paint for touch-up for all of the exterior of my house in all the different colors. And our, our house is a fairly gray color palette. You can see that's our main house body color. The trim is just white. You probably can't even see that that's a slightly different color than, than the uh, note card. And then the uh, other accent color uh, that I'm going to use on the shed is a fairly dark gray. So I uh, just used paintbrush and, and put these onto these note cards. Here's a quick close up so you can see what that looks like. So then I took these samples to Home Depot and I said, look, I need some exterior paint in a satin finish because that's what my builder used rather than a gloss or a flat. And I need them in these colors and they uh, color matched them and they mixed them up and they gave me the paints. So then yesterday I put my first coat of paint down on the shed in the body color and this is what the result looks like today and you can see there's some some banding um, and I'm not real thrilled with the way that it turned out now I suspect this is all about how I put it on the shed rather than the particular paint product itself 
the paint that I'm using is uh, is the Home Depot brand, I think. Uh, it's it's called Bear, um, and this is supposed to be pretty good. Uh, it's got primer built into the paint. It's an, a good exterior finish, and I think it has a lifetime guarantee of some kind. Um, but I sprayed it, and I sprayed it with my HVLP gun. Uh, let me get it. I'll show you some details about that. So this is the gun that I'm using, and it's also from Home Depot, just happenstance. Uh, I shop at Home Depot and Lowe's pretty much interchangeably. Whoever's got the best deal on the thing that I need, given whatever I'm looking for. But this is the particular gun that I picked up. Here we go, I found the manual for it, and there's the model number right at the top. And I only bring this up because this was almost the cheapest gun that they had. And there's two important things to mention about this. The first is that it was pretty inexpensive. I think it was 65 or $70, give or take. Uh, and the second is it did not come with this regulator. I had to add this. That was an additional 10 or $15, I think. But all in under $100, and I had, I had a gun that I could use to spray. With one caveat, and that is this gun specifically says you can't spray latex with it. However, when I was in the store getting ready to buy it, I pulled out my phone and checked to see what the reviews all said about it. And everybody said, hogwash, you can spray latex with this all day long. The important thing to remember is it comes with two tips. One is smaller than the other, and you've got to put on the bigger tip when you're getting ready to spray with latex. Here are the two tips that it came with. That one says 1.4 on the bottom of it. And the one I have loaded into the gun says 1.8. 1.8. Now I've had this gun for a couple of years now and I've used it to spray a, a number of projects and the latex has always gone through it relatively okay. Uh, on one project I did thin the latex a little bit with just plain water, uh, just a few ounces to the gallon and that did seem to help quite a bit. However, since I wasn't really happy with the results I got yesterday out of the gun, um, I went back to Home Depot to ask for some advice. Yesterday I did not thin this paint at all. I just sprayed it straight out of the can uh, into the hopper and uh, you've seen that process at this point in the video. So when I described how the paint went on and how I was applying it and what the results were, uh, the person working the desk there recommended that I use this product. It's a thinning agent for latex paints and it is specifically designed to make them more sprayable when they come pretty thick because most latex does come fairly thick. So his recommendation was to add uh, four ounces of this per quart. So today, this is a brand new gallon of the exact same color that I sprayed yesterday, which is here. I've only got about a quart and a half left. So I'll take all of what's left in here and then fill it almost all the rest of the way up out of this can, blend those two together and add some thinning agent and we'll see what the results look like. I should probably mention why I'm gonna blend these two paints rather than just try and thin just this part of what was left of my first gallon and try that. The reason is because I want to make sure the colors are as close to a perfect match as possible. And while they did use the computer to do the color matching, there can always be a little bit of variation in your tints. So because I'm hoping to get my entire second coat out of whatever I can mix in this bucket, I'm going to go ahead and mix these two together and hopefully I won't run out of paint and it will be a perfectly consistent color. One quick note, these things are for sale usually at Home Depot or Lowe's for uh, like less than a dollar. I think this one was 89 cents. Totally worth it. One point when you're using these things though is a lot of people stick them on the outer lip of the can. The problem is if you do that, when you pour the paint, all your paint is gonna go inside this inner lip, which is where the lid actually goes. So don't put it on the outer lip of the can, put it on the inner lip of the can. And then the paint will stay out of that trough that the lid goes into and uh, your lids will go on and off lots easier. All right, I brought that right up to the two quart mark. It says to shake well. I'm never sure how much I need to shake. I guess that much. Now the guy at the desk said I could put four ounces per pint. That's gonna be 16 ounces to the gallon. The instructions back here say that's the most you should ever put in. So I think instead of doing four ounces per pint, I'm gonna do three ounces per pint. That will give me a little bit more I can still add in case this isn't quite thin enough. I, 
keep saying pint, I mean quart. All right, I've got two quarts in my bucket, so I'm gonna measure out six ounces of this. Uh, I gotta tell you, I'm a little nervous that this is so white, but it claims it will not change the tint and will not affect the sheen. So I should still get the exact same color in a satin finish. Bombs away. Okay, so this is the stirring stick I used to stir in the Floetrol. And you can see this upper portion right here, that is the raw paint without anything mixed into it. And the lower portion here is what it looks like when it has been mixed with the Floetrol. Now the lower portion is still wet. I'm gonna let this stick completely dry before I put any paint onto the shed to make sure that there's actually no difference in the color between this section and this section. So we'll check back in just a little bit after this has had a chance to completely dry. All right, it's been a few minutes and this stirring stick should be completely dry now. Let's see if we can, we can see a difference. That looks pretty good to me. You can definitely see the line, but that's really between the first coat and the second coat from the stirring. And this little line here is from where it was laying on top of the paint can. As far as the color goes, that's a pretty good match. Looks perfect to me. And as far as the sheen of the finish goes, that's also a perfect match. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, spray this on the shed. So the second coat is actually gonna start at the very bottom of the walls of the shed. And I didn't have any good way to mask these off, so I just held a piece of cardboard and very carefully slid that along the bottom of the wall to make sure that none of the paint oversprayed onto the concrete or onto the rocks. And while this wasn't a perfect solution, it did work really well, and particularly where it's kind of my backyard and, and I don't really care if I get a little bit of overspray on the rocks, it worked out just fine. Now I could definitely tell a difference with the flow trawl in the paint. It did seem to flow out of the gun easier and I had a, an easier time with this second coat getting it onto the shed and avoiding those kind of lines and stripes that I had in there originally. Now some of you may be asking why bother with a paint gun, why not just roll it or brush it on? And the answer is really just speed. I could get the paint on much more quickly this way and get it into the kind of the nooks and crannies of the texture of the siding really well. With a brush or a roller, I think this would have taken a lot longer. All right, so that's gonna take care of it for everything except for the trim. Now I decided to use a roller like this one for the trim, and then a brush for any areas that I couldn't get to with the roller, because the trim is a little bit more delicate to try and paint. Certainly can't really spray this without a lot of masking. And as much fun as it can be to watch paint dry. Here I am slinging some paint on to all of the trim. And I found that as long as I was careful and took my time and went slowly, I didn't need to mask off anything or be super careful. Now I only did one coat of this trim, but I did do a very thick coat. And hopefully it'll stand up to the elements and last a good long time. With the trim all painted and finally dry, then the best part of the paint job is next, and that's to remove the masking and to enjoy the freshly painted shed. And I think it looks really, really good. So there's not very much left to do on this shed. I've got to build some doors and hang them, and I've also got to put a proper roof on, and I'll be covering those in my next couple of videos. I appreciate you watching this far. If you've enjoyed what you've seen or learned a little something, I'd sure appreciate it if you'd hit that little thumbs up down there for me. And if you want to see more videos like this, then go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And as always, thank you very much for watching.